Mwahaha. We have a golf club that has been in trouble. All right, so let's destroy a golf club. <laughs> Welcome back to the McGolf Shop. Jim McClear here in a kind of a Halloween setting. <laughs> the, the, I have had trouble with this golf club. This will be the third time. Now, the owner has said, I can do whatever I want to get this thing apart. He's never going to use this thing again. He bought another identical version of this. And I pulled the shaft that we put into it into another one. It's sitting up there drying even as we speak. Now, this is going to be kind of a, it's a fun video, but it's also going to be a learning video. What happens here, and TaylorMade is unique for this, is that every once in a while, you'll get one of these where this adapter just does not want to come out. And we're going to go over some ideas on how to make this go. You know, I've gotten questions on pings, I've got questions on TaylorMades and all kinds of stuff. And we're going to go through how to take out stuck adapters. But we very well may end up destroying this bad boy on the way in. So I, this could be some good do's and don'ts. So let's go to the bench and try and rip out an adapter. Welcome to the Golf Shop, Jim McCleary, and this is McGolf Channel where we talk about golf club repairs, golf club reviews, and golf club fittings. All your scores can go low. If you would, like, subscribe, hit that stuff across the bottom, and that way more of this information gets out to the YouTube universe. And if you would, on Mondays, we have a live stream, and it is What's in My Drawers Golf Talk. It's what's in the drawers of the shop. And it talks about the same stuff. We talk with people from around the world. It's about an hour, hour and a half, depending on who's on there. And you'll enjoy it. Join me. 5.30 Eastern or 5, 17.30 for those across the pond. Eastern time zone. All right. Now, let's go to the bench. All right, so one of the first things we got to talk about when we go to do this kind of stuff, you want to be, use safety equipment, right? You're going to want to use leather gloves because there's going to be a lot of heat. You're going to want to have, again, those same gloves because you're going to be pounding stuff. And if you slip, although the gloves aren't going to provide you like smash protection, but it will, you know, lessen the blow. So we want to do that. Also, if you're going to be doing a lot of flinging around, goggles above glasses or safety glasses, if you've got them, that kind of stuff. I'd also say work, when you do work on a project, put it in a vise. That way your hands can be free and nothing slips and gets you. So let's start with that part of it. So we got our gloves. I've got a couple of hammers. I got what I like to is the E-Swing. This is the DFH-12. It's a rubber version on this side, hard plastic on that side, and then a regular hammer. All right, also have a screwdriver, Phillips one and then a, a torque wrench in order to be able to take this thing out. Now I've already heated this thing up once in order to pull the shaft. The club is sitting right here. And what we're gonna do is I'm going to uh, heat this thing up a lot, okay? I'm gonna heat this thing up a lot. And, uh, ooh, new glove. All right, I'm gonna heat this guy up a lot. And then what we're gonna do, in fact, I'm gonna do it now. I'm gonna loosen this up and the reason being is this screw will be used as a punch at a, at a, at a time here. All right, you know that it's loose, it's out. And once you get it out, so when you move the screw out, that gives, when it's moved out this way, you can use it as a punch to drive it that way in order to drive this thing out. Okay, so burns o -matic. That's what happens when you use a glove. <laughs> Alrighty, so this time we're really going to give it... Now I've been kind of gentle with this because of this paint. Alright, when you're, when you're doing it for real and you don't have to worry about what's going to happen, you want to be very, very cautious about running the heat up and down here. Because the paint can only take so much. That's the reason why you want to remove the adapter, heat the adapter only, and then get it out of there. Well, in this case, we're just going to nuke it.
See, it's already starting to turn brown. And that's because I've got it hot. Okay, and so I'm going to try it. The whole idea here is I'm going to try and save this no matter what. But uh, I didn't want to mess with it to get with the chance of messing it up earlier in order to do this. But this thing has been in the shop twice and I have failed to take this thing out. <clears throat> All right, so, so to prevent some scratches, I got a towel. And in order for me to have some dexterity, this is going to come off. All right, so the first thing's first, I need a little bit of room. We're just going to put this on top and hold it. And then we're going to try and drive it out with this. And now we got it. We want to hit it in line, so I'm at a bit of an angle. See, that's the reason why we do that. So we're going to hit this a few times because I got it hard. Now we're going to give it a wrap here. Hey. I can't get a... All I'm trying to do is loosen it up. And that's the reason why I like working in a vise. This, this thing is going to take a lot of punishment, I think. Now, why do I think it's stuck in here? This is one of the things that we need to talk about. In the past, I've noticed that tailor-maids do tend to stick and they will not come out. Why is that? Well, in ones I have been very, very successful in taking out, uh, it has had verdigris in it, a, a white substance that almost acts like it's welding itself in there. All right. Got it out. We're gonna try it one more time. This time we're gonna use, we're still gonna use the screwdriver. And then if not, we're gonna to go to the vise. All right, let's try this a couple more times. I really need to have this held down, but. All right, as you can tell, I'm getting into it and it's not working. So now we're gonna to go to the vise. All righty, since we're not playing around and I get to destroy it, we're going to heat this thing up some more and I'm going to try and grab the, grab the adapter. So in, as far as shaft removal, that would have already been way too much heat. Now this is something totally different. Awesome. All right. There we go. All right. Now I think I will need the hammer. Yeah. Let's see if we can knock it out hard the other way. Now I'm just destroying the, I've bent it in so this, the adapter's done. So I'm not getting anything out of this. Let's put in there a little bit more. This could be a colossal fail. got it smashed up pretty good and still oh well, I've got a little bit of separation uh, 
I need the torque wrench. Let's back it out a little bit more. Felt a little tight in there. Let's see if that does anything. So I've got a little bit more of a gap now, so I'm really totally just destroying this thing in order to get this thing out of here, but that's the intention, right? Just keep trying to make sure that this thing's good to go. That's not gonna work. A little more heat. Now there is a chance of deformation inside of here, but I think I'm, I'm winning the war. It's starting to let go a little bit. Let's see if I've done anything wrong. I keep trying thinking I'm loosening it just to make sure it's not being stuck. Let's do this again. This way. All right, let's try and buy, buy, build it out. Aha! Here we go. I still won't let go. Wow. All right. Well, it's not this thing. It is amazing how this thing just will not let go. But I'm slowly but surely winning. Let's try that again. One more grab. I got a little more room on it. Oh. Let go. I'm winning. Voila! Ha <laughs> I win. Alrighty, so. Let's go back over the bench and let's clean this up and talk about what we just did. All right, so we made it over the bench. Whoo, that was a toughie. And just exactly what I thought was going on happened. So if you can see this, that thing is white and that the white is the vertigree that I was talking about. That thing acts as a weld, all right? Or an epoxy or what is, it's a thing that makes this connect to this. All right. And if you look inside, I don't know if you can see it, but there is a lot going on in there and it is just junked up with this vertigree. So what, so when you get into these kinds of things, there's just, you got to know a limit, right? I've told this golfer at least two times prior to that it won't come out. And I had him stand there with me and watch me do what I was going to do. 
and you saw what it took to make it happen. I literally had to destroy the adapter in order to get these apart. Now, this is still a usable club head now, except for I've got to, uh, I've got to clean this out. So as soon as I get it to hold, all right. So what we got to do is you got to take, oh, that's just the ring. So we got to do is we got to get in here. And there's a whole lot of crap in there. And uh, so I'm gonna need a, a bit of a, do it this way differently. Alrighty, oh, look, I got most of it. Alrighty, so a big, a lot of wire brushing is what you're really gonna need. I'm gonna probably hit this a couple more times. There we go. My screw just came out. Yep, I see. All right. And I got the washer there. So that's a good thing. And you can even see that if you can, I don't know if it's focusing or not, but there's a, there's a lot of white right in here too. So we're getting through a lot of it now. I think I got a lot of it out to be certain. Look at that, nicely done. So I just knocked out the screw, which is right here. And it has all kinds of crap all over it too. So I'm gonna have to clean this up before I put it back together. Alrighty, so the, therein lies the thing, right? We destroyed the club head. Didn't destroy the club head, thank goodness, but we did destroy the adapter in order to get it out. So this is just kind of a warning. So when you get to these po points where, particularly with tailor-made and where, where does that come from it would be my opinion and my opinion alone right now is that if uh, golfers go out and they play in the dew and the dew has a lot of fertilizer on it it can act as a catalyst to make a lot of this stuff happen okay now on pings pings do get the same thing but not at the same extent that the tailor-mades do and typically what you saw me when you put the you, you can wrap around the outside of it with a, a no bounce, like my East wig right here, and and do that. And what it does, it loosens it up, and then you put the, the ping torque wrench in there, and you can tap it. So far, I'm 100%, and it'll come out like that. Now, but on this one, as you saw, it was a little bit different. So as a club builder, club maker, you got to know those limitations in order not to break it or the or let the golfer know to be prepared that this is coming right you got you know you can take the shaft out and just destroy this and pick it together and go there we didn't want to go there at this time because we needed it turned around pretty fast so that was one of the things so number one lots of verdigris you got to clean it up so it doesn't come back that's one number two you're going to destroy something in order to get to it luckily we didn't have to destroy the head like I said, I've had this thing in here twice and certainly I've put it through its paces. I did half of what you already saw and it still would not come out. It took that extreme, a lot of heat and a lot of grabbing in order to loosen it up in order to get out. And when you see something that's got this much crud on it, that's just an indicator that it's, it's been in there like that doing its job for quite some time. So there you go. So if you got any questions about this, put it down in the show notes and we'll try and get to them as much as we can. Don't forget the live stream on Mondays at 17.30 or 5.30 Eastern time. And if you, if you like this, you want to see some more of it, throw some ideas down in the show notes and we'll take a look at them. And as always, let's see your scores go low.